Number 42. Polymers are large molecules composed of simple units repeated many times. Thus, they often have relatively simple empirical formulas. Calculate the empirical formula of the following polymer. And then we have letter D. So in this case, we have to find out the empirical formula for polystyrene, which consists of 92.3% carbon and 7.7% hydrogen. Now, to just put this into perspective, right, what, what is polystyrene? Well, polystyrene is basically a very, very versatile type of plastic. It, it can exist in many, many different ways. Like CD cassettes is made of that polystyrene. Um, like disposable razors, that's made out of polystyrene. But the most evident one that we'll see that is uh, polystyrene is those like foamy, it's a white foamy material that's used as an insulator. So it's like coolers, you, you know, those like white foamy coolers and like for insulation, that's polystyrene. So basically polystyrene is just a very, very simple formula that consists of just two elements. It just consists of carbon and hydrogen, but it just reproduce like not reproduces, but it just repeats itself over and over and over and over and over again to make these large structures. So let's figure out what the empirical formula is of polystyrene. We've done many different types of empirical formula problems, right? And we can find a empirical formula from a percent composition from percents with these four steps, which is this. So we always start at the percentage and we can end at the empirical formula. So let's just list out our percents. We got 92.3 percent carbon, and we have 7.7 percent hydrogen. Okay. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to go from a percent to a gram value. How do we do that? Well, first off, you should always just tally up and see if you have a total of 100 percent, right? That's the max amount of percentage that we should have. But if I total this up, we do have 100 percent as our total. And if we do have 100%, I can assume that the gram sample that we took of this polystyrene was a total of 100 grams. So if the total percentage equals 100 and the total grams equals 100, the percent actually equals the grams. So I won't say 92.3% carbon, I'll say 92.3 grams of carbon. And this is the same thing as 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen. And now the total amount of here in grams is the same thing. It's 100 grams. So we're good. First part is done. Now we got to convert from grams into moles. Ah, that conversion's coming back. You're never going to escape it. So converting from grams to moles is just a ratio, right? We're going to multiply each number. We have two of them by a ratio or a conversion factor, which is literally just times by some numerator and some denominator. Now I like to work with the units first. I always start with the unit that I have. In this case, I don't want grams of carbon anymore. I want to convert it into moles. So the unit that I don't want always goes on the opposite side. So in this case, it goes on the bottom. And the same thing for the hydrogen. I don't want grams of hydrogen, so that will go on the bottom. What I do want are moles. So that's the unit that I'll put on the top. So I'll have mole of C and then mole of H. Carbon goes with carbon, hydrogen goes with hydrogen. But now where are the numbers that are gonna go here, right in the numerator and the denominator? That's going from the periodic table. Your mass numbers might be a little bit different from mine. Different periodic tables round differently, so no worries. The answer is going to be very, very similar at the end. And remember, guys, these numbers from the mass number is the amount of grams that that element has. If you're using these numbers, this always equals to one mole. One mole, one mole, one mole. Get that in your head, okay? So one mole of hydrogen equals 1.008 grams of hydrogen. One mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. So between the two units, 
and I'm using the periodic table, I have one mole of carbon and the 12.01 goes on the bottom. I have one mole of hydrogen and I have 1.008 grams of hydrogen. The unit grams cancels out for both of them, and that's cool because that leaves me with the unit that I want, just moles. So let's see. These numbers are on the denominator, so I will divide 92.3 divided by 12.01. I'll cut it off after a few decimal places, so 7.685, and that's mole of carbon, and then 7.7 .7 divided by 1.008. I get 7.639 mole of hydrogen. Okay, halfway there. Well, we're halfway there. Did you finish it? <laughs> anyway, we're halfway there. Two more steps to go. <laughs> Here we go. Now we're gonna turn our moles into a mole ratio. Well, we kind of talked about what a ratio was earlier, right? It's just some number on the top divided by some number on the bottom. So when I come to here, I have my two new numbers, and those are my numerator numbers, which I'm going to divide each by some other number. But now the question is, what is the number that goes on the bottom? Well, think about it. We have to find an empirical formula, which is the smallest subscripts that can be used for a chemical formula, right? It's the most simplified chemical formula for a compound. So most simplified, the smallest uh, subscripts, you're going to be dividing each one by the smaller number or the smallest number. So I look between these two numbers and it looks to me that 7.639 is a little bit smaller than 7.685. So I'll be dividing each one by 7.639. Okay. Now at this stage of the game, when you do this division, your answer should come out to be as close to a whole number as possible. So try to round to a whole number if you can. 7.685 divided by 7.639. Yeah, this is 1.006. So I'm just going to say that this is one mole of carbon. And this cancels out, right? That's just going to be one. So I have one mole of hydrogen. Now all we got to do is just create the empirical formula from the numbers that we're, we have now, right? So in this case, I have a carbon. I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. I have one of them. Now in a formula, we don't really need to write the run, right? And then I have a hydrogen. I can write the one, but I don't have to. And that's it. This is the empirical formula. It's just CH. How much more simple, simple can you get? That's crazy. That's what polystyrene is at, at its basics, right? It just consists of one carbon and one hydrogen, and then it just gets, you know, polymerized. It just keeps repeating over and over and over and over and over again. So for a polystyrene that has, you know, 600 carbons, you can pretty much be certain that it has 600 hydrogens because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 10,000, which is absolutely nuts and crazy. And I can't believe that, you know, a little a little education channel would would you know, would gain that much interest for you guys. And that, that means a lot. So thank you so much for that. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard. And I'm here every step of the way from, for chem. All right. We also have physics and math. If you want to check out those videos on our channel, we might help you out with those subjects. All right. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.